Hey everybody, how's it going? Kay Miller here with a brand new segment that I'm trying out. I don't even know what I'm going to call it. It's just more of a vlog thing. And I know some of you guys already are aware of the fact that I do some things like this. But this is going to be different from the fight of the week and the finishing blow. And the fact that it's just going to be one single topic that I'm kind of curious about. It's going to be a more in-depth debate. And I hope you guys enjoy it for what it is. But it's really going to be based on community feedback. So this is actually something that I came across about a week ago talking to one of my friends on Facebook about The Expendables 3 getting a PG-13 rating. Now, there's this very split line as to whether this is a good thing or not. Now, granted, the second Expendables film is a PG-13 movie. We'll get to that in a little bit. But there's some people who feel very betrayed by the fact that The Expendables is continuing down the PG-13 line. They, they feel like it should be an R rating. It should embrace the violence. That's what it's about. That's how these action staples were created, and they should cater to the hardcore audience, the people who grew up watching these films, as a thank you letter to making them what they are today. So you've got these two different aspects. You've got one side where it's the hardcore fans, where they really, really want to see their classic action heroes doing what they did best, you know, not scaling anything back in order to reach a broader audience. On the flip side, you've got the studios and the companies that are trying to make the most money possible. They want a PG-13 rating so that the younger kids can come in, watch it, and experience the film because they wouldn't be able to do that if it had an R rating. So you've got these two sides really butting heads. And it's interesting because I can see both aspects of it. I can see the reason why the hardcore fans want you know, a, a throwback to the old classic action films, and they don't really care about the, the I don't want to say they don't care, but they're, they're not interested in pleasing the younger generation. You know, these kids, they didn't grow up with this. They didn't grow up with Rambo or, um, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris. So why, why try to cater to them when they don't know what they're even being serviced? Um, on the flip side, I feel like there are a lot of younger people out there who do enjoy good fights and enjoy gory classic action you know like the rape 2 is a good example of how good violent action uh reaches a broad audience now obviously parents aren't going to be taking their 10 year olds to see this movie um granted pg-13 is supposed to be 13 but you know what i'm talking about so it's it's kind of this dynamic of who do you cater to you know can you make enough um with just an r rating or do you need to make it a broader appeal so that more people can watch it so from my personal experience, and this is just me, but I want to hear what you guys have to say about this as well. From my personal experience, I, as a kid, I guess, I, I don't want to say I was sheltered, but there was definitely a lot of films I could and could not watch. Now, because of that, I haven't seen a lot of Stallone's films. I haven't seen a lot of Jean-Claude Van Damme's films because I wasn't allowed to. Um, the, the one exception to this, and I'm sure you guys are not surprised by this, is Jackie Chan movies. Um, my mom grew up watching Jackie Chan. You know, my uncle's the one who introduced me to it. So whenever a movie came out, she didn't even bat an eye. Even if it got an R rating, she would take me to the theater. And this was back when, you know, parents could buy your kids the, the ticket and then they could just drive off. Uh, it, times have changed now when you really think about it. But she would pay for my ticket. I would go in, watch the movie, and then I would come back out, and she would not even, wasn't even worried about it. And I think the worst, like, R-rated Jackie Chan movie there was, was Rumble in the Bronx. And I really think that only got that because of the little bottle scene where they're breaking and he's all bloody and battered and everything. Which was kind of terrifying to see because, you know, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, he's doing this for real. Which, no, he, he didn't actually let people hit bottles at him. But the thing is... My mom knew that Jackie Chan movies were not violent, and so she trusted that, I guess, brand, and I was allowed to watch those even if they had an R rating, but a lot of these other films, I wasn't allowed to watch, so I don't have that nostalgia factor. I can see it from both sides. I totally understand where people are coming from when they say that this should be an R-rated film, but at the same time, I feel like they would be doing a disservice to the younger audience and I'm not saying that every younger person is going to appreciate it but there you know there may be that one in every 10 kids who really likes action movies and really really appreciates it for what it is and 
it's hard for them to be able to watch a lot of these films that everybody else is talking about, say like The Raid 2, because of the rating um, and the violence. Now, there are some movies that are made specifically for the violence. The Raid 2 would not be the same if it was not violent, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, there's a lot of movies where they add violence to make it gory on purpose. But, you know, um, I'm just trying to collect my thoughts here, but... The uh, my my best example of this is going to be like RoboCop. Uh, the original film was violent, gory, and people loved it. The PG-13 version toned down. Not as many people liked it, and that's what people don't want to see with the Expendables. They don't want to see it be a toned down version of what it had promised initially. So in that aspect, I do stand behind the fact that it should be an R rating if it's going to change the creative aspect of the film. Now, if they're adding gore just to make it an R-rated movie, then I don't think it's necessary um, because you can't have good action without violence. But if you're built upon that staple, upon that franchise, then you need to cater to those people. So my theory is to please both sides. I think what should be done in a situation like this is that they make the PG-13 version of theatrical release, which hang on with me here, they make it a theatrical release, and then after the theater run is done, when it's coming out on DVD and Blu-ray, then they have an unrated or R-rated version of the same film. And, you know, it's kind of one of those aspects, I was talking with somebody about this, can you do it? You know, it, it would be a lot more expensive, a lot costlier if you did it that way, because you'd have to do every fight scene twice. But... I really think it comes down to how you do it. If you do CG blood, then yes, it's going to cost a lot of money. But if you go into the filming process knowing that you're making two different versions, which some people are going to be against either way. I mean, they could even do a limited run of the R-rated. But anyways, the thing is, if they went into it knowing that they were going to do a violent fight scene as well as a clean fight scene, they could have two different types of choreography or even bring the blood bags the different capsules and things like that that are going to burst or you know whatever they need so that they can film both of the fights back to back right then and there and then just please both sides of the of the fence um i feel like that's the happy medium when it comes to something like the expendables is if you do something in between then you can get the big theatrical run to please all the business suits or whatever you want to do or increase that crowd range. And then also you could do an unrated version for the people who are really, really hardcore about it or even do a limited theatrical release um, so that people can see that gore and violence on the big screen. But anyways, it was just something I wanted to talk about. And this is, as you can tell, something a little bit more sit down and just kind of let it out. And I know that I missed a lot of points. This is the first time I've done something like this. So let me know if you guys like how I'm doing it. Um, next time I'll kind of try to jot down some ideas and notes and do this. I'm, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head right now because I wanted to try it and I've been procrastinating for so long. So anyways, how do you guys feel about this? Do you think The Expendables should stick to a PG-13 rating? Do you think they should change it to an R rating um, in order to please their hardcore and pretty much the fans that built them up you know they're the people that made them the action stars they are today should they alienate those people to make it a pg-13 rating or should they cut off the younger audience to make it an r rating to make everyone happy or should they release a version of each and try to please both sides let me know in the comments i know you guys are super smart super outside the box when it comes to thinking about things and i know there's a lot of stuff that i missed so be sure to point that out. I'm not trying to start um, an argument. Please, if you, if you do post in the comments, please be respectful of other people's opinions. It's okay to be different. It's okay to have different ideas. But uh, in the end, people are just trying to state their point, and that's totally fine. You know, I, I would have learned a lot less if I didn't talk to these people who wanted the R rating because at first I thought it was silly that they were getting upset about it. But now I see their point and I totally understand it. And that's what this is about. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys think the Expendables should be R, PG-13, or if they should try to do both and then release it simultaneously. Let me know in the comments. I feel like I'm dragging this out a little bit. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is Kay Miller. I'll see you guys next time.